Worldlandia has changed. I feel it in the water. I feel it in the earth. I smell it in the air. Much that once was is lost. For none now live who remember it. Oh my god. If Lord of the Rings and Bob's Burgers is the crossover you always wanted but never expected to see, then do I have good news for you. Today on Can It Be Played, the show where I try and determine the rules to games that don't exist, I will be looking at Gale Force Winds, a board game epic created by Linda's sister Gale. This monster of a game appears to be equal parts runebound, Arkham Horror, Candyland, and Bratz Passion for Fashion. A game of this magnitude deserved a fantasy epic styled opening. Same quality, but different style to the ever-changing opening to Bob's Burgers, the cartoon sitcom that is surprisingly good. But as much as I love the show in general, a three minute section of one episode stands out above all the rest. In Season 4, Episode 19, in an attempt to avoid getting a cavity filled at Dr. Yap's, Louise runs away to her Aunt Gail's. Linda and Bob do everything to get her to cave and leave. Their third attempt is having Gail force the kids into playing the board game she made that was stimulating to the imagination but too good for the major board game companies to look at. I made a board game that stimulates the imagination but that was too good for the major board game companies to even touch. Oh, I gotta make room! In Gale Force Wins, we only ever see a couple moves and a few lines to indicate the goals and style of play. But as little as there seems to be, I found it more than enough to come up with a rulebook for the game. One that captures the fantasy, adventure, chaos, and wonderfully weird energy of Gale herself. So allow me to present the rulebook to the board game of the century, Gale Force Wins. Force wins, players are heroes on a quest to save the five realms of Worldlandia from the evil sorceress Rebecca. Who thinks she's so cute? One player is Princess Gale herself, who acts as both a playable hero as well as the game master. As magic in Worldlandia is stronger the cuter someone is, the goal of the heroes is to make Gale cute enough to date a prince so she can dispel the winds. But not just any prince, Rebecca's boyfriend. Gameplay is a simple roll and move style with players taking turns moving around the realms. As seen in the episode, the available heroes are an army man, blue baby shoes, a blender, and this little warrior person who I'm treating as the stand-in for Gale herself. I added a fifth character, a purple plush cat as seen in the background of Gale's apartment, so there can be up to five players in any one game. As stated, players roll dice and move around the board, completing adventures on the space they end their movement on. These adventures can be random tasks, weird encounters, or provide essential items. I tried to include as many references to Gale episodes as possible from seasons 1 to 4, before the game was introduced. Players are told that the way to win is giving Gale a fashionable item that makes her cute enough to date a prince, specifically Rebecca's boyfriend, Prince Boyfriend. Once Gale has the correct item, all she has to do is enter the borders of the evil upper world, and the prince will have no choice but to ask her out. Speaking of the evil upper world, let's go over the five realms themselves. As Rebecca lives above Gale, her realm is called the Evil Upperworld, and is really poorly decorated. The Queendom of Gale is basically Gale's apartment, which is full of items and cat-related encounters. High Schoolia is not a land where everyone has fun, but can be a great place to revisit years later when you become successful. Wharf World can be great if you have a lot of tickets, or you bring your sister and she drinks a lot of wine. 
Ooh, I love champagne. Mm, mm. Oh, it's good. Finally, TV land is a great place to escape and unwind when you want to shut your brain off for a while. In order to determine what item you need and what your adventures are, trust in the Game Master, Princess Gale. It is up to her to lead you to victory. Before we get into the second section of the rulebook, I want to look at the game board again in more detail. I mirrored the board from the episode exactly, making sure to include the extra spaces seen in this shot the day after Gale and the kids play the game. The five realms are separated by borders, and each include their own unique adventures, plagues, and items. For example, the Cold Shoulder Plague can be found in High Schoolia, and Bed Soritis is in TV Land. I also made sure to include the spaces mentioned by name in the episode itself, such as Cold Soria, a plague found in all five realms, and Sponge and Dungeon, which is in the Queendom of Gale, exactly three spaces ahead of the Baby Shoes starting position. I knew this position exactly because we get a quick look at the die roll Louise makes in the first turn of the Belcher Kids game. The board also has tunnels between realms, secret areas only reachable through a magic flying napkin, and an evil monkey army that blocks movement. This last space was inspired by this line. Never mind, just help me get past Rebecca's monkey army. I decided to interpret this line with the rule, if your die roll would move you through the monkey army, you must stop on this space. You're stuck here until another player lands on this space and loses their next turn to help you fight free. Seeing as Tina plays the Blender, which starts in TV Land, and Louise plays the Baby Shoes, which starts in the Queendom, it makes sense that Louise would ask for her help to get past the monkeys instead of Jean, who, as the army man, starts in High Schoolia, much further away. Anyway, now that we have delved a little deeper into the game, let's go back to that second section of the rulebook I was talking about. After page 5, we come to a much longer section that is meant only for the person playing as Princess Gale. This is inspired by the Traitor's Rulebook as seen in the board game Betrayal in the House on the Hill and its spin-offs. As the princess, she has a little more information about Worldlandia than a normal hero. In this section, there are seven secrets that Princess Gale can choose to share with the heroes if she wants. The first secret is a doozy. Once the heroes help Gale get a date with Rebecca's boyfriend, Gale reveals that the game is far from over. Oh, oh my god! god. Ah! The winds weren't dispelled, only moved to another realm. They're now focused in High Schoolia. The heroes realize that they must have Gale date not only Prince Boyfriend, but every prince in Worldlandia. They must now have Gale date the other four princes of the realms in order. Derek Dematopoulos in High Schoolia, Mr. Frond in the Queendom of Gale, Calvin Fishoder in Wharf World, and Scott Bakula in TV Land. Side note, I know this episode airs in Season 4 and Gale doesn't date Frond until Season 6, but I really wanted to include him, so I did. Secret 2 is a quick rule about how indecision can upset the Gale Force wins, as seen in this scene. But I cluck like an enchanted chicken for 20 minutes to get this magic ointment. I don't know. Uh-oh, your indecision has upset the Gale Force wins! <laughs> And then we move right into Secret 3, which gives every detail needed to get Gale a date with all the princes. Gale could tell the hero she needs the orthopedic sneakers to date Prince Boyfriend. She could tell them she needs the keyboard of sonnets and the keyboard strap of skill to date Derek Dematopoulos. Or she could keep it secret and have them figure it out themselves. Up to her. She's the princess. I'm sure they'll figure out how to get the shrimp dress for fish odor and the hand-knit sweater for frond on their own. And how hard could it be to figure out that they need to tame the mighty Caterbus and call him by singing a jazzy song to climb up the cliffs of Huxtable to free Scott Bakula. I mean, it's not rocket science. As you can see, I tried to make everything as complicated as possible, as I doubt the real Gale would ever try and make things easier. I can't imagine how frustrating these hours spent playing blind were. We've been playing this game for six hours and no one has even made it past the cliffs of Huxtable! Not to mention how Secret 4 throws them another wrench. Once all five princes have been dated, the game still isn't over. 
Princess Gale tells the heroes they must now make her cute enough to defeat Sorceress Rebecca head on. And without reading the rules for this word for word, let me summarize by saying, it's really, really annoying. Secret 5 details what changes in each realm once a prince has been dated as the winds move on. By the way, I should mention I was inspired to create the rule of the winds moving on and having to clear the realms one at a time by this scene. Why are any of us here? Think about that. Whoa, you kids got further in Gale Force winds than I thought you would. Did you see it? Let me play it again and then show you what the board looks like when they start playing. Why are any of us here? Think about that. Whoa, you kids got further in Gale Force winds than I thought you would. It's called Gale Force Winds. Did you notice what was different about the board? The one thing that could clue Bob in to how far along they got? That's right, it's the fan. The fan is originally set on the bottom left of the game board, but when Bob remarks how far the kids got in the game, it's on the bottom right. I incorporated this into my rules by having the bottom left be the first realm they have to clear of the evil winds, and the bottom right being the last one, TV Land. To Bob, who has played the game before, he knows that if the fan, thus the Gale Force winds, are in TV Land, the heroes must be on the quest to date the last prince, Scott Bakula. Next is Secret 6, which takes up nearly a third of the entire rulebook. It is here where I detail exactly what happens on all 200 spaces of the game board. It's separated by realm, each having their own unique adventures. Now, don't worry, I won't read every single one out loud, but I do want to highlight some of my favorites. The Mampocalypse, a plague in the queendom where all the men become infected and will die in three turns unless a player can get to the nuclear bunker in time. The Pretty Paws Cat Salon, where the cat beasts, such as the mighty Caterbus, can be made pretty. Conestoga Yoga, where players must do yoga inspired by westward settlers from a documentary Gale probably saw once. Gale-shenary, Gale-themed Pictionary, gale Operty, Gale-themed Jeopardy, and my favorite, Sing, the task where you must sing the most famous song by the rock band The Tatas. Janital. Some spaces, like the Fishing Cat and the Gopher of Inspiration, are inspired by things seen in Gale's apartment or set in other episodes. The last secret is maybe the most important. It is to have fun, if you can in this game. But like Princess Gale says, what's the point in spending so many hours with your friends and family if you don't have fun? Take time to enjoy the adventure you're sharing in Worldlandia. And that goes double for the adventure you share when the game ends. At 21 pages, this is the second longest rulebook I've ever made for a fictional game. I found it important to include a lot of additional goals that are kept secret from the players, adding to the effect of the game feeling like it will never end. While I'm very proud of the work I put into this, I have to end by emphasizing this game was made to be annoying to play. Bob describes it like this, after all. It's horrible. The rules don't make any sense. It takes all day to play it. Yes! Gale Force wins will drive Louise nuts! I took that to heart. The quests are hard to complete, the spaces are unforgiving or frustrating to get through, and just when you think you're done, there's more to do. If you thought watching the Lord of the Rings trilogy all in one sitting with deleted scenes was a marathon, why don't you try and finish just one game of Gale Force Wins? Oh god.